Rabbi Elia Chaim Meisel, the great Rav of Lodz, who uh, was one of the most impactful rabbis in all of Poland. We're going to tell his story tonight, as his yard site is Yud Dalet Iyar. When he passed away in 1912, the funeral in Lodz was one of the largest funerals that was ever seen in all of Poland. Tens of thousands of Jews came from all over Poland to give their final respects to the great Rebel Yechayim, who was the Rav of Lodz for nearly 40 years. He was buried in the Chalkas Harabanim of, uh, of the cemetery of Lodz, it's one of the largest cemeteries, Jewish cemeteries in all of Europe. A careful reading of his tombstone will show you how beloved he was in the eyes of all of his community of Lodz. He was perhaps the most beloved rabbi in all of Poland. Prior to his coming to Lodz, he had been the rabbi in, in three different communities, including the prestigious community of, of Lomja. And then he comes to Lodz, he's hired to be the rabbi, and he works together with some of the wealthiest Jews in all of Poland, including Israel Poznanski, who was the textile magnate in Poland at the turn of the 20th century. Poznanski built for himself one of the most beautiful homes in all of Poland, uh, right there in downtown Lodz. And then just adjacent to it, as you can see to your left, was his factory floor, factory building, which uh, actually housed his workers. And he uh, built one of the largest uh, companies in all of Poland. Rabbi Meisel was able to uh, encourage Poznanski to take on the project of building the great synagogue of Lodz. Um, as you can see in front, hundreds of Jews gathering in front of the shul. And one of the most impressive things about this synagogue was that it had an Aron Kodesh that housed 150 Sifrei Torah. It was in a huge room serving as the Aron Kodesh. Rabbi Meisel was a tremendous Talmud Chacham. It was Mechadesh uh, during his drashos that he gave and students that he taught, and yet he did not produce any Sfarim. And he was often asked, why didn't you put out any Sfarim? Some of his contemporaries, like Rav Chaim Salavechik, and the Svas Emes, either during a lifetime or after, produced some of the most, most important works uh, that were written at the time. Rebel Yechaim said that uh, he did leave Svarim as his legacy, but not Svarim Chidush Torah, but ledgers. Ledgers of all the money that he gave out, whether in loans or as tzedakah. He was an unbelievable about tzedakah. He gave away everything that he had um, and made sure that nobody went uh, hungry in his in the whole city of Lodz. There are many stories about Rabbi Meisel's great wisdom. He was a pikach. Maybe we'll just share two of them. Uh, in Lodz, everybody kept Shabbos. At least they didn't open their stores on Shabbat. What they did in the private in the homes was their their private business. But there was uh, one individual who who opened his store. And the following Shabbat, Rabbi Meisel had an, a plan. He told his gabai not to wait for him in shul that Shabbos. He left early in the morning and sat in front of the store of that Jew and waited and waited until that Jew would come. Uh, he did come to open his store, and he sees the rabbi sitting there. And first he thought, maybe he's just waiting, and then he realized he's sitting there for hours and hours and hours. He's probably there to prevent me from opening my store. And he, he eventually has some compassion on the rabbi. He tells the rabbi, please, I, I beg of you, I, I, please go home. I, I promise you I'm not going to open my store uh, out of respect. I will not open my store on Shabbat. Please go home and join your family and have Kiddush. And so the Rav smiled at him and said thank you and uh, was able to make his way, preventing Chil Shabbat in his city for all the years that he was the Rav, and almost 40 years till 1912. Another amazing story of the Rav's wisdom. There was an elderly man who passed away, and uh, he had lived with a another elderly man together. His family came to the rabbi to complain that they know that their their father had left uh, his money under his mat, and they they went to his clean clean up his things after he had passed away, and they looked for the money, and there was no money left. And they assumed that his roommate had stolen the money. They asked him about it. If they know where the money is, he said, I don't know anything about it. I, you know, I, I would never do anything to hurt him. So they went to the Rav and asked him what, what, what we can do. So the Rav came up with a great plan. He called the, the, the roommate into, his, into the uh, morgue. And he said, you know, 
uh, did you take the money? He said, no, absolutely not. I would never do anything to him. He goes, okay, I understand completely. Um, and, and just one thing we ask of you. Just have to make a shvua bitkiaskaf, meaning hold on to his hand, grab the ma- hand of the man, your roommate, and just say, I didn't take the money. What the Rav did is he had his son go under the sheet pretending to be the dead man. And when the man grabbed his hand, his son grabbed tight the, the, the hand of the elderly man. And he was so frightened by it. He goes, yes, okay, 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 I'm sorry. I, I took the money, I took the money. And with this, the Rav was able to return the money to the family. So while uh, Rabbi El- Eliyahu Chaim Eisler did not leave any svarim behind, his masim tovim, his wonderful actions and his wisdom remain with us till today. Remember him uh, in blessing. Yehi Baruch.